Good morning, folks, and uh, welcome again as we join just to simply read God's Word together. It's Thursday morning, and this morning we're going to read Acts chapter 15. So let's read God's Word together. While Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch of Syria, some men from Judea arrived and began to teach the believers. Unless you are circumcised as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them and argued vehemently. Finally, the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem, accompanied by some local believers, to talk to the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent the delegates to Jerusalem, and they stopped along the way in Phoenicia and Samaria to visit the believers. They told them, much to everyone's joy, that the Gentiles were being converted to. When they arrived in Jerusalem, Barnabas and Paul were welcomed by the whole church, including the apostles and elders. They reported everything that God had done through them. But then some of the believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and insisted, the Gentile converts must be circumcised and required to follow the law of Moses. So the apostles and elders met together to resolve this issue. At the meeting after long discussion, Peter stood and addressed them as follows. Brothers, you all know that God chose me from among you some time ago to preach to the Gentiles so they could hear the good news and believe. God knows the people's hearts and he confirmed that he's accepted the Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them and for he cleansed their hearts through faith. So why are we now challenging God by burdening, burdening the Gentile believers with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? We believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. Everyone listened quietly as Barnabas and told, Paul told about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done through them and among the Gentiles. When they had finished, James stood and said, Brothers, listen to me. Peter has told you about the time God, for, God first visited the Gentiles to take, from them, to take them for a people for himself. And this conversion of the Gentiles is exactly what the prophets predicted as it is written. Afterwards, I, return, I will return and restore the fallen house of David. I will re rebuild its ruins and restore it so that the rest of humanity might seek the Lord including the Gentiles, all those I have called to be mine. The Lord has spoken, he who made these things known so long ago. And so my judgment is that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write and tell them to abstain from eating foods offered to idols, from sexual immorality, from eating the meat of strangled animals, and from consumption of blood. For these laws of Moses have been preached in Jewish synagogues in every city on every Sabbath for many generations. The apostles and elders, together with the whole church in Jerusalem, chose delegates. And they sent them to Antioch of Syria with Paul and Barnabas to report on this decision. The men chosen were two of the church leaders, Judas, also called Barsabbas, and Silas. This is the letter they took with them. This letter is from the apostles and elders, your brothers in Jerusalem. His, it is written to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, Sicilia. Greetings. We understand that some men from here have troubled you and upset you with their teachings, but we did not send them. So we decided, having come to complete agreement, to send you official representatives, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are sending Judas and Silas to confirm what we have decided concerning your questions. For it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these requirements. You must abstain from eating food offered to idols, from consuming blood or the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. If you do this, you will do well. Farewell. Messengers went at once to Antioch, where they called a general meeting of the believers and delivered the letter. And there was great joy throughout the church that day as they read this encouraging message. 
Then Judas and Silas, both being prophets, spoke at length to the believers, encouraging and strengthening their faith. They stayed for a while and then the believers sent them back to the church, church in Jerusalem with a blessing of peace. Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch. They and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord there. After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's go back and visit each city where we have previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are doing. Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and they sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas as he left the believers and entrusted them to the Lord's gracious care. Then he travelled throughout Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches there. Amen. And that's the end of Acts chapter 15. Again, another interesting chapter as we read about what's called the Council at Jerusalem. Um, as the believers debate amongst themselves what is actually necessary to be a follower of Christ. And the realisation that it's not about acts, or not about what we do, but it's about the grace of God. But also interesting, <coughs> Paul, I know Paul and Barnabas separates because they have a disagreement, but the what they want to do, what Paul wants to do, what he does do, is go around and see the churches where he's preached before, keep in contact with the other believers. And that's something which is really important for us. Uh, keeping in touch with one another, seeing how each other is doing, seeing um, what the positives are, what's going well, but also seeing what the struggles are, where people are, are having difficulty, so that we can then walk with one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, and help each other. Uh, life is difficult enough without us arguing amongst ourselves and not helping each other. So the challenge today is, who can we think of who maybe we can phone or write a letter to, drop an email or text, go on to FaceTime? Somebody who we can just encourage, somebody who we can talk to. Ask them how they're doing. Ask them how they're getting on. Ask them what they want us to thank God for. But also ask them, what can we pray for to help you? There's a challenge for today. Let's pray together. Father, again, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessing upon us, for bringing us into a new day, for giving us food, giving us clothes, for the beds that we've had last night to sleep in. Lord, we are blessed. Lord, may we be grateful and thankful for all that you have given to us and all that you continue to give to us. Father, this day we continue to remember those who work sacrificially for us. Yes, we naturally think about those who are working in the hospital, doctors and nurses and physios and OTs, those who are working in the, the kitchens to prepare, prepare food, those who are cleaning the, the, uh, the, the hospital as well. Lord, every member of, of support staff in the hospital, thank you for all that they are doing for us. But Lord, thank you as well for everybody else who's out there working for us, for all our, our shop workers, all those who are in retail, those who are delivering goods to us, for post workers, for all of our emergency services, Lord, for, for those who are keeping our country running. And we even think about our water supply, Lord, our electricity, uh, those who are, are keeping utilities running. Father, whenever we actually start stop to think, there are so many people doing so much for us so that we can stay at home and be safe. Thank you for those people who are doing that. Lord, and please keep them safe. There's been so many reports of those who have lost their lives while serving others. But just protect them. And for those who have lost their lives, Lord, please be with their families this day. Just draw near them and comfort them, we pray. But Father, as we continue to be at home, as we continue to have to social distance, Lord, again, help us to look out for others. Help us to look out for maybe through those who are struggling. And just through a phone call or through something else, just encourage for our fellow brothers and sisters around the world, Lord, for whatever circumstances they find themselves in, may you be close to them this morning. May you be near to them. May your blessing be upon them. May your arms of protection be around them. 
So Lord, thank you and continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for watching. It's been lovely to have you along. Uh, back again tomorrow, same time, same place. So see you then. Take care. Bye.